So today on Six Gear, we're going to be interviewing Ben Bird now at only 22 years old. Ben has already had a very successful career in motor car sales, having worked for at least two or three main dealers. But in addition to that, at only 22, Ben has actually owned some amazing cars. So we're going to talk to Ben both about his experience as a dealer, as a salesman, but also about some of the wonderful cars he's owned. Ben Bird, fantastic to have you here as a visitor to the college. Tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get into mainstream car sales? For me, it all started when I was really, really young. I've always known that I've loved cars. The main introduction for me was when I was at school. Um, the school told us to go out and find work experience for two weeks. Um, with that in mind, we had a local VW dealership which was very close to us. Um, it was part VW and part Lotus. So, being a car enthusiast, I thought, well, you know, it's a perfect place to go. So I approached them uh, with regards to working for the two weeks and, and they welcomed me on board. Um, within that two week period, they were so impressed with my knowledge of cars and how I interacted with customers and the staff. Um, they offered me Saturdays there for one year, which I did. Um, after that period, I got a real taste of what it was like to work in a dealership, the buzz of people selling cars, meeting new people every single day. Um, I wanted to be a fully fledged sales executive. Um, I couldn't unfortunately do that at that time um, because of the, the situation we were in with regards to the credit crunch. So moving forwards, what I decided to do was, do I become a mechanic? Do I become a bricklayer? I was thinking of getting a skill which would be quite useful I could use in later life. Um, decided to go down the bricklaying route because um, I would like to do um, property developing when I'm a little bit older. Um, so I thought it would be a great chance to, to get some experience behind me with that regard. So I did that. I'm now a qualified bricklayer. I did for two years. Um, and while I was there, I really, really wanted to get into another sales job. What I actually did then was I approached another dealership. This time it was Vauxhall and the company was Marshalls. Um, what I did was I applied for the job. Um, I got the interview. It wasn't a normal interview as a one-to-one. -one. It was uh, a, a room full of about 20 people. And they'll ask you questions throughout the day, uh, and different tasks as well. Um, and I was very fortunate enough to get the position at Vauxhall. I did a lot of training um, to, to get to know the, the industry. So effectively I took that training and I took that back and I ended up working back at Tesco phone shop, selling my lot of phones. From then onwards, I was thinking, well, do I want to go back into that sort of industry within cars because is it going to be the same scenario again or would it be slightly different? So there's only one way to find out and that is to, to go in um, and, and apply for that. So this was Merkitt's Vauxhall. This was a privately owned company. Um, I got the interview. It was a one-to-one -one interview. Questions that were asked, why should I give you the job? Why, why would you want it over anyone else? And my enthusiasm and passion for cars and motorsport shone through. And with me, as an individual, you need to give me the opportunity to prove myself. And I will succeed because I'm very, very hard working. So I got the job with, with Vauxhall. And I very, very quickly became top salesman because I was dedicated to what I was doing. I wanted to succeed and within that role I wanted to be the best I could possibly achieve. Um, so with that I, I worked for Vauxhall for 18 months, having a short spell aside of travelling. I went back to Vauxhall upon my return and then the main one came up which was Mercedes. I registered interest with them. Um, I didn't expect to hear anything back because I, th I thought they'd think 22 year old lad He's probably not got enough experience to work for a German prestigious brand such as Mercedes-Benz. I got an email back asking for a CV, sent my CV, I got an interview. The interview stages were very, um, were very difficult in the sense that the first interview should be with a sales manager, the second interview would be with the sales manager and the general manager, and the last interview would be with the general manager and group general manager. And in between that you had to do an online assessment as well. So all this was taken care of, I did all of those things. They were really impressed first-hand uh, interview, so they, uh, my sales manager brought the, the general manager up, so I effectively had two interviews in one. 
um, did the other parts of the, uh, the interview stages and I was offered the job. They said they'd love to work with me. Um, I've been there for the last six months and I'm currently now top salesman with them. Congratulations, I mean that's, that's very good. So in each of these cases, Ben, um, these were not jobs that were advertised then, but you actually took your own initiative to apply for the jobs yourself. Yeah. Do you think that's, that's the way to get the jobs? Yeah, unquestionably. It's, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't put your name out there, then no one's going to hear about you, and you'll just blend into everyone else that's applying for the jobs. If you stick your, your flag in the sand and say, I want to work with you because I can bring this, this and that to your company, then they're going to listen to you and you've got their attention. So from, from what you're saying from your experience, it, you know, you, like you said, you, you've even done a bricklaying course, it wasn't really, you didn't need to have any specific qualifications, formal qualifications to be a, a salesman in the dealership. You just needed, you, from what you're saying, to have the inspiration and, yep. and, and determination. Would you say that that's, that's fairly yeah, common? That's yeah. key, really. Right. It, it, it's how you engage with customers and you come across. It's your personality that's got to shine through. That's why they buy. They, customers will buy from people and that's all it is. It's not, you're not a robot. You make up your own personality to shine um, and, and come across to customers. Um, so I didn't qualify the best at school. I didn't go on to get higher edu education, but I wanted to, to succeed within cars. If, if I was to ask you, what do you think was the one thing that probably would have impressed the, an employer the most about your interest in the job, what would you say it would be? Um, I think it's knowledge, really, um, but it's also how you come across to that employer as well and the enthusiasm that you bring. If they ask you a question and you just sat back and you didn't really respond with any enthusiasm, then they'd think, well, are you going to be like this in a sales role? Are you just going to sit back and let a customer walk past you when they enter the dealership? But if you show initiative and you get up there and you speak to those customers and you show them that you know the knowledge and you want to, sh you want to sell them that car, they will give you the chance uh, uh, and let you do it. Tell us a bit about presentation. How important is personal presentation? How you look in front of a customer? It's very important. Right. I mean, if, you've, if you reverse the roles and you walk into a dealership, if I walked into a dealership and I saw someone that was um, correctly dressed, who was well-groomed, I would think, okay, they, they know that their job is important to them. Um, if you find someone that, that isn't for any reason, they might not show enthusiasm uh, and commitment to their job because it's not very difficult to, jet, to dress properly um, and you're sending a message to, to that customer that's walking in and they're going to judge you within a split second and that first, uh, first split second has got to be right. So in terms of sales, what exactly is involved in the job? I mean, we can speak the obvious and say, well, you go into a car dealership and you want to buy a car so the salesman is selling you the job, but what's actually involved when you're doing it, when you're actually delivering the service? It depends on what sort of car you're looking at. Let's take a high performance car for example. I will go down the route of qualification and asking you what's important to you about that car. Because it's all well and good saying that's a very fast car, but that n might not be what you're interested in. It might be the comfort aspect of it. You might want a car that's fast but an all-rounder. I'll ask you, is it performance you're interested in? Is it the noise of it? Is it how it looks? It's all those all different right. things. Let me, let me give you an example. So then I'm coming in and I'm looking for I'm looking at a really high performance car and you say to me, well, what do you like about it? And I said, oh gosh, I really love the way this car sounds. I've seen a few of them on the road and they seem mm. to really sound like the business. What would you do from there? First of all, if I was going to do a walk around presentation of the car before a test drive, um, I would ask you to stand at the back of the car while I started it because that has worked time and time again. It, it, people's emotions just take over and it is just amazing to actually watch that and guide them through that process. Another thing that's really important is the drive, the test route. If a customer is asking specifically for noise, I'll do the route, which has got a little bridge. And under that bridge, the windows will be down, and we'll be hearing the upshifts and the noise from the exhaust echoing through that tunnel. And that, has, again, it, it just sends people into you know, it's, it's, it's excitement. You can actually see it on their face, the smile that appears. It's just, And you're there with them, and you can feel it. And it's just fantastic. It's a brilliant feeling. So the bottom line is sort of having that knack for reading the customer then, isn't it? Yeah, that's key, definitely. Yeah, because if you misread a customer and you're trying to sell them something that's 
sounds very good, but they're not interested in that, then they'll switch off and they won't be interested. But if you ask the right questions and buy into them, then you'll, you'll get the nail on the head. That you, you'll have them then listening to you. I'm looking at these wonderful cars that are flashing up behind you, as I'm sure our viewers are. And um, I have to say, they are, they are a selection of some of the finest cars you've owned. But that's been over a short period of time from what I remember. I mean, how old were you when you got your first car? I was 17 when I got my first car. Mm. I've always wanted to drive. Growing up with two sisters and a brother, who my brother is seven years older than me, so he got to drive, he got to, to go out and experience these different things way, you know, way before I could, uh, I could do anything um, with regards to driving. It was just really, it, 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 it sort of threw me into, right, I need to be older, I want to be older, I want to do things that he is doing. And he had had about seven cars before I was even 17. And I was thinking, this is crazy, I, I need to drive, I've always wanted to. And yeah, 17, I had the first lesson on my 17th birthday. And I passed two months later with two minors. Now I know from your presentation this afternoon, Ben, that you are a serial supercar buyer and the cars have been flashing up on the screen behind you. I've had difficulty not looking at them myself as I'm talking to you. But at only 22 years old, I mean, how did you manage to own such sensational cars? It's something that I, I have to pinch myself with every day. I never take anything for granted. I wake up in the morning and I'm, I'll pinch myself thinking, I own an Audi R8 V10 at 22. And it is, spectac it is a spectacular feeling because I've earned it, I've worked for it. They have been a lot of cars in a short period of time and the reason for that is because each car that I buy, I push myself. And what I mean by that is if I can't quite afford something, I'll work that little bit harder to make sure that I get it. And what I've done in, the, in between work, I do detailing of the cars as well. So um, I will research for quite a long time before buying the car as to what car it may be. Then I'll set my sights on that particular car and I'll look for a long period of time to see what comes on the market and what sells. So I then know what to buy and what's gonna be popular for resale. So where does the detailing come in? So what I'd like to do, or what I, I tend to do, is I'll buy the vehicle, I then detail it in the sense that I'll give it a full valet, I'll then go into it and clay bar the car. Uh, clay bar is essentially just cleaning the paintwork of all contaminants before machine polish can begin. Um, so it removes any tar spots and things like that, and it will leave a nice glossy finish. After that process, you will then do the first stage of machine polishing, which will remove any uh, swell marks which are on the surface of the paint. You can then go over it again and you can deepen that glossy finish before applying the wax at the end. Now, I used to detail um, quite a lot in the sense I, I tried to sell my own company up. Um, I did this while part-time working at Tesco. Um, so what I wanted to do was, I at the time had an Alpha Mito, um, I detailed that and I'd use particular products on the paintwork and on the windscreen and the glass and I'd go around to customers' houses and I'd go, well, this is what I can do with the car. I've got a video here with me pouring water over the car and you can see it running off. Would you like the same for your car that you've earned, you know, you've worked very hard for? Because it will protect it. And that's very important, being visual as well. Instead of just talking about it, showing people is really important. Um, so I did that for a summer, but it was very hard work. One car would take at least one or two days. So it was very time consuming. So what I wanted to do was do that for my own cars instead. So um, how, how did you get the training? Um, I, I'd actually watched a few programs um, with, with cars and they were going before and after. And I thought, well, wow, I, I've been cleaning cars for a long time, but I never thought that you, know, you could get a car looking that good. So I researched it and I looked into machine polishers um, and I ordered one and I was watching different videos to find out what compounds would be the best and what pads would be the right ones to use and obviously makes as well of those products. Um, it was, uh, was self-taught really was what it was. Um, I also tried little parts of it on, on particular vehicles in small areas to see what the results would be and they were staggering. Um, so that's how it progressed from there. So, so what kind of reaction then have you, I'm sure you've had 
great reactions from customers when you've worked on their yes, cars. Can yes. you give us, um, I mean, that must be inspiring too. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the best ones that I ever had was um, a customer of mine bought a Corsa from me, brand new Corsa. Um, she rang me up one day and she said, Ben, I don't know what to do. She was quite an elderly lady. I, I, I've scraped the side of the car. She said, my, my son is going to go mad. Can you, can you help me? And I said, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Come in, bring the car in, let me have a look at it. She brought the car in. Um, and what I actually did was I detailed the side of it for her. And afterwards, there was nothing there at all. There was no evidence that she'd scratched it. And when she came to pick the car up, she had to look both sides because she didn't know which side it actually was. And that, for me, is, is a moment of truth experience. That you're, you're, You've just done this for this lady, and she is over the moon about it. Great. So it looks almost as if you've created two parts of the profession yourself. You, you, you've got yourself into uh, selling motor cars professionally. You've also been running your own detailing business, all of, all of your own efforts. So how do you then, what was your first car? It was a Fiat Grande Punto. Right, and your most recent car from what you said is an Audi R8 V10. Yeah. What have you had in between? So I've had things like uh, Renault Megane 250 Cups. Um, I've had a E92 BMW M3. Um, I've had two Nissan GTRs um, and a Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG. Um, all fantastically uh, brilliant cars in, in own, you know, completely different ways. You know, a, a lot of people ask me, "What's been your favourite car?" And I'm going, "Well." They're very good in their own way. You know, each car is different, which is why I've bought it. So did you just buy them and, and sell them on, or did you, did you do anything interesting with the cars? Um, on three occasions, I've done three road trips uh, right. into Europe. Oh, uh, right. The first one I did was with the Megane 250. Uh, the second one was with the BMW M3. And the third was with the second GTR. So you've, you've really enjoyed your ownership of the car, you've, you've really used them and enjoyed them. Mm. So um, it's a fantastic story and I know from the session we had earlier on today with students that they, they were almost, uh, well their, their mouths were dropping when they were looking at your cars, but um, 22 years old, um, you've achieved a lot. What of the future? Well, I keep telling myself that I need to be sensible and get a house. Um, I said that three cars ago and I still am sitting here with, with, a, with a car. Um, I am one of the most enthusiastic uh, people you will ever meet with regards to, to, to actual car enthusiasts. I, I love them, I live and breathe cars. Um, I've said this will be the last car I get because I'm doing a, a road trip down to Spain in a few months time to watch the Spanish Grand Prix. My thoughts after that, potentially to sell the car I may look at getting another one, but realistically I should get, uh, get a house and start getting on the property ladder and, and get into that property developing that I want to do in, uh, in the latter um, sort of couple of years' time, I reckon I'd like to do that. Well, all we can say is that um, from your experience so far, it uh, no doubt is going to be another successful journey for you. Ben Bird, can I say thank you so much for appearing on Six Gear. It's been my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.